Welcome to the Ranking Every Commander with the Nitpicking Nerds. We're going to go over every single commander in Theros Beyond Death. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, and that makes us the Nitpicking Nerds. And if you enjoy us ranking everything, and you have seen the whole backlog of us ranking every commander, and you haven't subscribed, why? Why would you do that? It's a lot of videos to watch without subscribing. And besides, you'll want to be a subscriber to this channel because our subscribers are 10% more likely to be chosen as a demigod. It's really my guy here. Uh, I don't know of any guys choosing demigods right now, so you probably won't be chosen. And who doesn't want to be a demigod? I just need to get into this video. We got 27 commanders to go over. Half of them stink. And let's just get, let's just start blazing through them from the bottom up. That's the, where did they where did they end up on our overall list? Of ranking every commander. Uh, they all stink. <laughs> That's they f- all of them? No, I'm just being pessimistic. You just said that for no reason? Yeah. I, why don't you just tell us what the first one is? The first one is... The ter- worst one. <laughs> yeah, the worst one. The bottom of the list. Uh, Terra Nika, a Crowan veteran, comes in at 700, right above Daxos of Melitus, and right below Skyfire Kieran. One way white for a 3-3 Vigilance when she attacks another target attacking creature, gets untapped, and then it becomes a 4-4 with Indestructible. It only technically does something. That's not very much power at all. Yeah, it's okay. She can only <laughs> grow things that are bad, like things that don't have much power. What, like, I guess things that have lifelink are good, like really tiny creatures. She doesn't do anything. This card sucks. I I don't know. I don't even have to spend any time. She has no lore. The art is medium at best. The only interesting thing is that she's next to the Gideon Rest in Peace statue. Yep, that's about it. Uh, next, we have... Kunaros, Hound of Aethrios, coming at 695. Like right above that. <laughs> right above Terranika, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Right, wow. Well, it's actually right above Runetail, Kitsune Ascendant, and right below Ishan Shade. That tells you how good this character is. It's right below a vanilla. <laughs> it's right below a vanilla. It's one black white for a 3 3 Vigilance Lifelink Menace. Creature spells can't enter from graveyards, and players can't cast cards in graveyards. If you randomly want to play black white, Hate bears, I guess this is your commander. It has lifelink and menace and vigilance. So this is an okay attacker in limited. Yeah. I, there's basically nowhere else. This Once again, Theros, let's just get it out of the way now. This is going to come up for every single commander. Theros didn't come out with a full-fledged story or book or e, uh, online articles. There was just a lore dump of like, hey, here's the five main characters. Here's the demigods. Here's the titans. And there's like one paragraph on all of them. And here's what happens in the story in, like, ten paragraphs. I think they did that because all the books got the worst reviews I've ever seen. and Everybody hated their guts. And I don't even... They didn't, the one, I only read the one War of the Spark. I didn't think it was that bad. No. Well, regardless. This it doesn't, is, doesn't matter what we think. It just... People hated it. Wizards was like, okay, fine. We're pulling back. Maybe next time they have a story. But this time, no. So as a result, most of these don't have any lore. Yeah. So we just have... And this guy has no lore. It's a server. Services are kind of cool. Art is whatever. It's kind of just, it's not even a cool looking Cerberus in the art. Now, the other one was cool. The five mana, six, six menace. No, it couldn't be blocked up by three creatures. The ho- I think it was just called Underworld Cerberus. That card was cool. But it wasn't even legendary. So we can move on, I think, because these cards don't do anything. Illyrios Enraptured, 676, right below Zhaohu Dune the One Eyed, and right above Majida the Lion. Oh, sorry, some old favorites of the channel. Majida the Lion. <laughs> that doesn't even sound like a real thing. <laughs> I don't. I couldn't tell you what that card does. Yep, it's in at six seventy six. I don't know if you said that already, but when he enters, he enters tapped, and he stays tapped. If you control a reflection, makes a reflection when it enters, it's a three two reflection. That's it. What's does he have a mana cost? Oh, he costs two and a blue. Does he have power toughness? He's a two three. Okay, that's good. He's that's good. He doesn't really do anything. The only thing you can do, which is why he has some fun points, is you can flicker him. And make multiple reflections. Yeah. And then he'll never, ever untap. I love the idea that he just keeps staring at all the reflections. He, like, can't. But there's, like, five. He just can't choose. Yeah. Uh, he Obviously, you guys know what this is based on, the story of, what is his name? Narcissus. Yeah. I remember that because it's really easy to remember. Yeah, his name is Narcissus. Uh, he stares at himself in the lake. And what he, was the uh, MTG wiki summary it, for Illyrios? Did it say a narcissist? Mm-hmm. That was it. That's what we got. That's what we're working with for these, these lore dumps. All right. Ephemia, the Cacophony, is next. She's at 636. I like this card, but it really doesn't have anything good going for it in Commander. One and a black for an enchantment creature. Two, one, Harpy, flying. Those were random words to say those orders in. Orders, 
Wow, random order to say those words then. There you go. Yeah, she's right below Aurelia Exemplar of Justice, and she's right above Raksha Golden Club. Do it the Club. other way. At the beginning of your end step, you may exile an enchantment card from your graveyard. If you do, make a 2-2 zombie token. The two more cards that, honestly, right now, I don't know if I'm like having a stroke, but I can't remember those. <laughs> you can't remember what? Either of those cards. Uh, Aurelia is the one that pumps the creature and has Mentor. Oh, yeah. I don't know what Golden Club is off the top of my Probably head. Equipment. Probably equipment. Probably Mirrored in something, something. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. What do we like about Ephemia? Nothing. I like her art. <laughs> yeah. So that would be something. I guess. There you go. I like her art. And she's... I don't know. I think it's cool to pump out zombies in return. Like a mono black self mill. It just doesn't get you anywhere. This card is very low power. This is, yeah, well, a 2 2. If... Even if it just said at the beginning of your end step, make a 2 2. What is that you doing for you? Even if it said at the beginning of your end step, get a 2 2, and it does that from your command zone, it's still just okay. That'd be a lot better. It'd be a lot better. <laughs> I mean, that's still not that good. Turn one, get a 2-2. Two -two. That's pretty sweet. Uh, Watch out, limited players. All right, we're, we're obviously just blazing through the ones that suck, but once we get to the better ones, we'll no. give you every num every uh, category. Right, so we got Khalifi, Beloved of the Sea. She comes in at 597, right above Seki, Season's Guide, and right below Chromium. Just regular Chromium, not the, the OG. One. The OG Chromium. What does she do? This costs one blue, blue for a star three. Her power is equal to your devotion to blue. So it's two with her and can be as big as you can make that devotion. And if you want to target her, you got to pay one extra. You're all your opponents. Assuming you're an opponent. Assuming you're an opponent, which I was assuming, obviously. That's the exact words of the card. <laughs> if assuming you're an opponent, then you got to pay one more. The only thing we like about this card, again, is the art. But constellation art for this is woo, stellar. The other art is old woman on a boat. Uh, and old woman on a boat is boring. Yeah, we uh, don't like old woman on boat. She has two for power. I, th I think that's the highest one we've seen so far, just because if, if the star happens to be in the power. So you could get this up to like a 7-3. No, you could potentially. Ah, it, it, it is possible. And the art's amazing. To make it a one shot. Yeah, it is possible, which is tempting. It's a little tantalizing. It's like, ooh, what if I could just one shot with Khalifi? <laughs> Cal I like Khalifi. Khalifi, Khalifa, Khalifa. Khalifi just sounds like not Greek. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what Khalifi sounds like. Khalifi. Uh, Utropia, the twice favorite, is next. She's at 521 above Yomiji, who bars the way. <laughs> Didn't we say that was Yojimbo? No, no, no. There was somebody. It's Kanda's Yojimbo, I think, was a thing. I don't know. But then <laughs> it's uh, right below Asperia the Inscrutable, the original Asperia, she is a one blue green 2 2 constellation. You put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control, and it gains flying until end of turn. I mean, this, we're getting somewhere. We're starting to prove. It's still Simic. This is Simic counters, which is why it's not very unique. Uh, you're going to be playing enchantments, putting counters on creatures, hitting with them, flying. It's not that powerful. You get, there's cool stuff like Harden Scales and Oath of the something of the wood. It's like two and a green for an enchantment, whatever an enchantment energy. You get a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. You get to play, so there's like some enchantments I care about counters. So you can maybe get, get something going with this, but it's a little bad. Yeah, it's a... A lot slow and very a lot, slow. And a lot bad. You need like four counters before I feel good about this. It's pretty. It's pretty fun to just keep putting counters on, flying over, bashing face. Art is fine. She's holding two things, and the two for coolness is for each god that favors her. One, That's what we one for each favor. I like it when you wrote it that way. <laughs> Who's next? Uh, next we have Hectos the Unscarred, right above Rectos of the Fileer, and right below Abnixilus of the Black Oath at four ninety. Five. So it goes Rakdos, Hactos? <laughs> it does go Rakdos, Hactos. Hactos is white, white, red, red for a 6-1 with the ability protection from all converted mana costs except for 2, 3, or 4 chosen at random. And? And? and uh, the worst part. Oh, yes, to attack each turn. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. One toughness has to attack each turn, huh? Three opponents, converted mana costs that they're all going to play... Ooh, can't build around this card even if you try because how are you supposed to know which random number you're going to hit? Are you like just going to put all twos in your deck and then try to flicker it somehow? This card would probably be good if it was just like protection or anything but two. No, if you get to choose. Then you get to choose, is sweet. this card is insane. Yeah, That's like pretty much not even a weakness. No, not really. It's like, I choose four. Because there's no fours in play. Bash you for six. <laughs> yeah, then that card would be playable. Yeah, this card's real bad, Commander. just doesn't work out. It's so hard to build around. You have to play, like, Anthems, maybe? Or uh, Dictator the Twin Gods? That's not even that good. No. Look at this. He's running up. He's going through all those arrows. The people in the back are like, oh, crud, there's a lot of arrows. And he's like, there's not even a lot of arrows. Yeah, based on Achilles, 
obviously. I mean, that's the weak spot. You choose if it's his ankle, his in between his ribs, or in his ear. Uh, yep. Yeah, uh, he's not even scared. He's just running right into a bunch of arrows. I think, yeah, which is also a reference. Hactos the unscared. Yeah. I mean, it's also a reference. I mean, the fact that there's arrows on it is a reference to how Achilles died. Yeah. Paris, the country, shot him with an arrow. The, the country? I think so. I think that's what it was. Thrix, the sudden storm is next. Not mincing any words, except we minced a few, and we're mincing some now. 467 is his number. He is above Arvad the Cursed, and he's below Jai Balor Task Mage. He is a three white, white, four, five flash flying. No, he's not. He is a three blue, blue, four, five flash flying giant elemental. Spells you cast with mana cost five or greater can't be countered, and they cost one less. This guy was cool to build. It was really, really cool to build. It's not that powerful. It's it, it flashes in. It's got a nice body for its it, for its mana cost, and he's got a nice body. He is pretty he's jacked. shirtless. He is Jack. He looks like he's gonna knee that little guy in the face. There is a guy in the art. This little guy. He's like, eh. I think it's an archer that was about to attack, but Thrix is about to block him. He's like, nah, -uh, son. Yeah, he hits him. And he just knees him in the face with a. Uh, v trigger. That's what Kenny Omega's knee to the face is called. Uh, <laughs> six for fun. You get to play big giant stuff. That's fun to do. Stone calendar. <laughs> we all learned a card that day. <laughs> and the art's great. Uh, the art's really good. He's scary. He I kinda, wish he had lore. I guess he works for Thassa. He's Zeus esque. Zeus esque. And so is Karanos and so is Heliod. Everyone just wants to be Zeus. There's in this, a, well, I mean, in this, command, in this for, uh, set. In this four map set. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Dalekos, Crafter of Wonders. You have to read it now because you're being mean. Oh, no. Uh, it's right above Angus McKenzie, right below Renata, called to the hunt. Oh, spoilers. <laughs> Spoiler. And it's at 448. One blue red for a 2-4. Uh, you can tap it for two generic mana that can only be used to cast artifacts. And your equipped creatures have flying and haste. This is probably one of the worst rares in the whole set for Limited, but uh, he actually translates to a cool little equipment-themed deck. Yeah, I mean... It even it is actually kind of cute with Batter Skull. We decided, did we? It's I thought cute. we just hated it. Well, it's cute. Oh yeah, Batter Skull sucks. Don't play Batter Skull. Yeah, but it's cute. It's if Batter Skull was a card that actually gave all four of those abilities to be playable. Oh, if Batter Skull just said flying vigilance life flank haste. Yeah, then it's actually playable in Commander. I think at that point you are you saying it's playable in this deck because I still don't think so. I think it is. No, I, I feel like we talked about that. I think it's still playable. In this deck. Uh, well, I don't know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't I really mean, matter. He's, he's you already have to play equipments. The equipments aren't that good. There's enough equipments. Mm. Sort of everything. Sort of X and Y. Every one of those is better than better skull. That's not true. Sort of War and Peace is pretty poop. I'll take it. That's, that's that's protections. I think once you suit up two of them, they can't be targeted by like anything. Yeah. Regardless, uh, his art is fine. He's just kind of standing there. Craft and Wonders, you making, know him. Making a fishing oh, wait. pole or something? You don't know him because he has no one. He's a merfolk who's making a fishing pole. He's probably based on something. If uh, you can tell us what he's based on and like link to where it's posted, we'll up his lore to a five. We have a rule of if they're based on a character but have no lore, then we just give him a five for coolness. Because that's, oh, that's cool. They based it on something from Greek mythology. I couldn't find anything for a lot of these. So if you can let us know, we'll bump it up. Yeah, I don't know what he's based on at all. He's based on Dalakos, Crafter of Wonders. Yes, the merfolk wizard. Yes. Uh, what's next? Obviously. Is, you didn't know. Is Renata called to the hunt. Four, four, seven. Right above Delicos and right below a Togatog. This is two green, green for a star three. Its power is equal to your devotion to green. And all creatures enter the battlefield with an extra plus one, plus one counter. Creatures you control. Creatures you control. I hate saying you control. I don't, yeah, I do. I don't know that. why. It, it, I don't know. She barely does anything. She's better than Grumgully. We kind of looked up the scores for Grumgully and we're like, it's got to be better than this. Yeah, it's the same power as Grumgully. I mean, it's slightly better, but not not better enough. To, like, only humans is not a relevant creature, a relevant enough creature type to give it an extra point. Yeah, but uh, she does have more uniqueness points. She's got, she's an enchantment and her power can be in flux. So she can just be huge. Yeah, she can also one shot potentially. She could potentially one shot people. I don't know how often that's going to happen, but we can move on next to Timurit, chosen from death, four forty-two. He is right above Neogen of Seeing Winds and right below Brimaz, Brimaz King of Oreskos. Yeah, so Timurit is black black for this another one of these enchantment demigod. Blah 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 blah. He is a two star. You know how that star reads. We've told you too many times. If you don't remember, I don't care anymore. And you can pay one in the black to exile two cards from any graveyards. And? And, and what? If they're creature cards, you gain a life. Oh, yeah. 
sleeping on the job. Oh, like that's a relevant text. That's great. I was just strictly better than if it. Excuse me. Are you not familiar with our thing where we say things are gravy if they're tacked on? Oh my god. <laughs> First day on the job. What's what? What, what do we like about him? He doesn't have very much power, but he does actually okay to give it. He's better than the ninety nine for sure. Oh yeah, he's black scavenging goose. Yeah, he has a black scavenging goose. He's so much better than ninety nine. Art is great. The art is terrific. And we're not talking about the constellation art because the constellation art is just okay. Yeah, there's a couple constellation arts that just kind of suck. I think in this set, like but this the other one. one always carries it. This one is so good. He's he just like looks like a scary. Also. The worst part about this character is when you play it on the media, he goes, oh, it's really annoying. Yeah, definitely. Uh, anything else? Is there anything? I don't think so. I think I think maybe now we're starting to get into the the more heavy hitters. We got Siona, captain of the Pileus. Once again, who is this based on? 423, above Aurelia, the war leader, and below Myojin of Night's Reach. A lot of Myojins are showing up. Yeah. It's like <laughs> squeezing in between all the Myojins. She is one white green for a 2-2 two -two when she enters the battlefield. Look at the top seven cards in your library for an aura, then put it into your hand. The rest go on the bottom. And then whenever an enchantment becomes attached to a creature you control, an aura, I guess, you get a 1-1 one -one white human soldier. Uh, this has a one card infinite combo. Beasy, tell him what one card infinite Shielded combo. by faith is one white white for an enchantment. And when it enters, you can, well, it enters attached to a creature and it gets <laughs> indestructible. I think I might be dying. Whenever another creature enters, you can attach it to that. And Siona says, hey, make a 1-1. One, one. And you can just, every time you make a 1-1, one, one, attach it, make infinite 1-1s one, until you want to stop. I don't want to stop. You have to. I don't want to. You literally have to stop. That, yeah, I know I have to, but I don't want to. This is an aura deck. She immediately replaces herself, which is super good. because it's deep. She does. Isn't it seven cards? It's yeah, so seven. much. <laughs> this card is actually pretty sweet. I've seen a whiff in Limited. It's funny. One of the only... Two card infinite combos, one of which being the commander I've ever seen. I, there's yeah. not, there's okay, there's not many. It's like one percent of commanders have that. I'm sure there are others, but again, there's not many. I'm willing to bet that the one percent is probably about accurate. There's, there's like eight or nine that have that. Okay, that seems fair. Uh, and she's just got decent looking art, and she kind of looks like Wonder Woman. She kind of does. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. Wonder Woman is not Greek. Wonder Woman esque feel. Wait, Zeus is... Yeah, she actually kind of is. She kind of is. Weird. I wonder if she... I don't know. That'd be cool. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I think about it. And Uniqueness, she's just kind of a... She's an Aura's Matter commander. That's she's a good Aura's commander. Commanders. Riders and Bruises. She's a good Aura's Matter commander. <laughs> ah, that was English. Ah. I am having a lot of trouble there. Next, we have Arasta of the Endless Web. Right above, a Chroma Angel of Fury. And right below, a Catch of the True. It comes in at three ninety five. This costs... Two green green for a 3-5 enchantment spider lady. Uh, whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery, you get a 1-2 spider. With reach, and she has reach. Joe Jerry's least favorite ability confirmed. This is so much worse. This is like Delicos. So much worse than limited, but once you're in commander, it starts getting pretty good. It's perfectly fine. It's not very powerful because you still need your opponents to be casting instant sorceries. Even, every, even if she said like every upkeep make a 1-2. We're not breaking the bank on that. That's not that crazy. I mean, they're just they're so low impact for a creature token. They're just slowly trying to make Ishkana playable by printing one, or, one more spider for her deck. Yeah. This is not a commander. Ishkana is still the spider commander. Not close. The, yeah. Not this is even, even an enchantment. Close. So that when you put it in your graveyard, Ishkana is like, hey, you got Delirium now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's what we're talking about. Ishkana is the supreme spider. She's weird, though. She, like, makes the web out of her hair. Her web comes out of her hair. Spreads to the underworld somehow, and she's got gross. She has two arts. I don't know why, but she want, they're both gross, like egg sacks with just these little baby monster spiders. She don't also they have like human hands or something too. It's no gross. I don't know. It's, they have don't human know. faces. It's still weird. Human faces are weird on like spiders it. too. It's unnerving. All right. I don't, nice. know if I, I don't know if I'd be able to smush a spider with a human face. I don't know. But you think spiders would just develop human faces so you couldn't smush them? That's you know what? That's probably <laughs> evidence that evolution is in fact false. <laughs> Just it's done. We we've done away with it. Finally. Next at three one three. I don't know why I didn't say three thirteen. We have Galia of the Endless Dance. She's right above Lazav, Demir, Mastermind, right below Yeheni, Undying Partisan. What does she do? She is green and red for a two two with haste. Whenever her and two other creatures attack, you draw two cards and discard one at random. And satyrs get plus one, plus one. Other satyrs you control get plus one, plus one. 
It is not a universal boon for satyrs. Uh, I mean, there's not many satyrs. I mean, you're definitely not playing this as a satyr commander because there's just not enough to even close to make a deck. It's so it's just way too janky. Maybe if you throw in changelings, you got something. But the, it's only plus one, plus one. It's not even that crazy. It's not worth building around. Yeah, her art's really good. She's dancing. She's got Banana Boy in the background. Banana Boy's in the background. There's humans that are like break dancing. The art is, I was surprised to give us a 10. It's so good. There's yeah, so much going on and she is so happy and she has a dude in a headlock and he's like, Ooh. And she's got uh, a staff, and on the end of the staff is a chalice that she drinks out of. She throws them back. She throws them back. No one's seeing what you're doing because we're, these are too short for me to put you on the screen. That's fine. No, I didn't want anyone to see that. So fine. Good. Nobody saw it. Good. As long as you know no one saw it. All right, perfect. We are we are cruising. We're cruising. We're getting into the first god that we have, and it's the only multicolor god in the set, the main set. F it's <laughs> Colossus, god of destiny, above Nin the Pain Artist, below Edric, Spymaster of Trust, at 244. We're getting up there. There's a couple good ones in this set. She is one green red for a four five indestructible. She got the devotion thing. Uh, at the beginning of your pre combat main phase, exile a card from a graveyard. If it was a land, cool. You get her green or red mana. If it was not a land, great. You get to deal two damage to each opponent and you gain two life. Yeah. Uh, she doesn't really do too much. Nothing crazy. The fact that she's indestructible is like where all the power comes from. Because this is just a slow burn. You're going to slowly burn them out. You're going to slowly get the mana ramp. This is just going to provide you a bunch of advantage. Yeah, it's just, but it's not anything game breaking. It's nothing game breaking at all. Uh, I don't even know if I would say if it's a threat. Five for fun because uh, we look, we looked into it and probably the best way to build this deck is probably just to blow up land so you can keep using closest uh, game or uh, abilities while everyone else is doing nothing. For this to matter, every land has to matter. You know the the parity has to be offset. So that's one way to do it. You could just play like random enchantress too though. The art, not and again, not talking about the constellation. The regular art is a ten out of ten. Best art in the set. I don't even. Mm, it's not even wow. close. This card, this art is amazing. Magali killed it. Magali did kill it. Fabric and light. Who knew? Uh, well, this one's even better than just fabric and light. It's fabric light and slightly changing colors. Hair clothing, gradient hair clothing. Ooh, yeah, gradient is a great word. That is what you did. Uh, next, we have Dactos, Blessed by the Sun at 237, right above Mero Nar and right below Toothy, Imaginary Friend. This is white, white for a two star. What does the star stand for? I'm not telling you. I've already told you. I'm not telling you this anymore. Ugh. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield of your control, you gain a life. And whenever a creature you control dies, you gain a life. That's not crazy. It's not. It's very, very low for power, but I think this deck is fun. You actually have life gain. You have a thing to build around. You have amazing art. And it's Daxos. So we've talked about Daxos twice. He has a pretty long story, and he's one of the main characters of the story. So he has a little bit going for him. He also gets to, uh, you get to play that really bad card that makes his butt, his deal power equal to his butt. Gauntlets of Light. You get to play Gauntlets of Light. The Nippy Gamer is exclusive. Secret tech for the Daxos deck is Gauntlets of Light. No, oh, it was so cool. And one shot somebody. Yeah, one shot. Just, <laughs> so bad. <laughs> so bad. You know, it's not so bad. Atris. <laughs> I was going to say, this is actually not that great. Atris, Oracle of Half Truths. Above Corlash, Heir to Blackblade. Below Lyra Dawnbringer. She's at 234. She's two blue black for a 3 2 menace. Human. When she enters the battlefield, an opponent looks at the top three cards of your library and picks face up and face down piles. So obviously one has two, one has one, or I guess it could be three zero, but probably two and one. And then you pick one and you draw those cards and the rest, the rest go in the graveyard. It can't be three zero. Uh, don't let your opponent tell you you can't do that. You can do that. They can do that. You can't do that. They don't let, well, yeah, don't let your opponent's opponent tell them they can't do that. Yes. They could just be friendly and go face up three cards. Nope. Face down three cards. It's mystery. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Got him. This I is... Almost a vanilla creature, but it does have an Enter the Battlefield ability, and the Enter the Battlefield ability is really cool. That's where all the fun comes from. This is a super fun ability to resolve, even limited. It's not backbreaking though. Yeah, obviously, yeah. it's there's, just draw two. There's a like you get to play so many different games with this. Like you put something face up. Like oh man, he put a really good card face up and two cards face down. But are those cards better? Basically, this is four mana three two draw two. I I don't know how you can convince me otherwise. You either get. You see a, a bad card, and you take two that you know have to be better than it because you want card uh, quantity. Or you see a really great card, and that's worth ditching another card. The card is great. Yeah, so you just take it. This card's fine. I like this. I just like this card. I love I love the face down thing, making this such an interesting, cool thing. And your opponent gets to do it, so they can make a mistake. I like I like this card. 
Well, definitely one of the weirder designs in the set. Coming in at 163, we have Nylia Keen-Eyed, I hate that name, right above Varal's The Sky Striped, and right below Revan, Predator Captain. Three in a green for a legendary enchantment creature, God, 5-6, indestructible, devotion text, blah, blah, blah. Creature spells you cast, costs one less to cast. You can pay two in a green, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature, put it in your hand. Otherwise, you can put it into your graveyard. Or you can leave it on top. It's just, but that's not how it's worded. Yeah, you may put it in your graveyard. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just worded. It's basically a surveil if you do, if it's not a creature. There's a couple random cards in the set that have borderline surveil. Yeah. And e this, to, e to Extinction just says surveil one, but they can't keyword it because it would change the playability of other cards. Yeah, whatever. I don't feel like dealing with that. Sure, that's not. That's actually not part of this review at all. She's so we can talk about that she's actually pretty strong. I like both of these statics. I mean, your creature's costing one less is useful. It does, a, it does a decent amount to help you out. And she's a mana sink. That's great. Yeah, it's, I mean, so much better of a mana sink than the other Nylea. She's a decent elf ball commander. She can be, you can go infinite on mana and just feed into her and make her Dry probably win the game. deck. I mean, if you go infinite on mana and you just put a walking bliss in your deck, then you automatically will win. Yes, yeah, that is actually true. So uh, she's got good fun. I think this is a this would be a really good a blast. You just play one colorless cards tribal. <laughs> the cards that cost one and a green, so that you can just pick green for them. Yeah, this is fun to play. I mean, there's no, nothing crazy here that's like insane. You're just going to let you play magic. You're playing elf ball, you're playing stomp, you're doing stuff like that. At least she also, she, she does give you a few directions to go. Mana ramp, card draw on a green commander. Yeah. Can't really complain about that. Yeah, not and too. And it's She has no additional lore this set, but she did some work last set, so we'll give her the same. Uh, she had um, her art. Uh, she... Oh. Her regular yeah. art is whatever, but yeah. her constellation art is pretty good. Her face, like her face is covered, right? She's kind of covering her face with her hand and she's looking off of the, she doesn't even look that big. She just kind of looks like a person. I don't, I don't like the art at all. What is she shooting? I don't, what could, what could be up there? Is she shooting the moon? With her keen eye. <laughs> yeah, oh, the uh, bronze blooded, bleak hearted, sun crowned. Uh, she's got good eyes. <laughs> uh, she's keen eyed. Anyone can be keen eyed. Oh my God. Terrible, terrible name. Oh, this is the this is the commanders that I start really liking them. Is I think right here is the part where I like the rest of these on this list. All right, all right. Uh, we have Thassa, Deep Dwelling. Woo! 159, right above Patron of the Moon, and right below Ishkina, Graf Widow. Which the superior we've, spider. <laughs> which we've already mentioned in this video. So we're going to move for a legendary enchantment creature, God 6-5. Indestructible, you know the devotion text. At the beginning of your end step, exile up to one other creature you control, then return it to the battlefield under your control. Three, blue, colon, tap another target creature. That's just, grab it. I'll put us on screen for this. Fine. Gravy. Gravy. Oh, we have to come up with a name for this. I think that would be a good idea. So leave it in the comments. Maybe we'll have our patrons vote on it, what the name actually ends up being. We do need to name this. People are like, you got to name it. So we'll, we'll think about it. We'll think about it. Yeah. Uh, this card is pretty good, actually. It actually, if you steal a creature, it keeps it under your control if you flicker it. Yes. If you want to play mono blue threaten effects. <laughs> I mean, I was thinking like mind control. And then you just get rid of the mind control. That's fair. And then the creature stays. I was just making a bad joke. Yeah, you were. This card is our pretty all right. It's going to be way better than Conjurer's Closet, as we discussed. And we even used the Gravy Boat last time, talking about her. Yeah. She, again, you just flick your creatures. You're playing ETBs. You're playing in mono blue. So you really just go with things like Prayer Gandry, because you can just, like, at the end of your turn, oh. untap some lands. That's guaranteed tap a creature. Uh, at if, least, if, right? Well, yeah, at a minimum, man. You're probably holding stuff up at that you're point. You're definitely holding stuff up. You're, you're going to be all tricky. You're going to be mono blue. Heart is just good. She looks good. Just rock solid. She gained 20% power after Cure beat her butt. She gained power? Yeah, she was a 5-5. Five five, now she's a 6-5. Yes. My power has increased by 20% since the last we met <laughs> count. <laughs> Doesn't work as well. 20%. <laughs> it's about as arbitrary as saying they doubled. <laughs> that is about as arbitrary. Uh, she's mono blue flicker commander. Nothing crazy unique, but flicker's fun. That's what we got for you. Yes, she's getting her butt whooped on Cure Best the Sea God. Cure always best the Sea God, and it's sad for Cure. Or sad, not sad for Cure, because Cure is just whooping her butt. Cure undefeated against Awesome. <laughs> 1 and 0, baby. And 0 and 1 against Eldrazi, and 0 and 1 for ever mattering in the story. Yes. Uh, next, we have Athreos Shroud Veil. Buy a box promo. Buy a box promo right above. Marisol, the Pretender, and right below Angie Falconrath. No, no, no. It's Anya. Remember? Is it Anya? It's Anya Falconrath. No, it's Angie. Angie Falconrath. 156. 
Four black white for a legendary enchantment creature god indestructible. Four seven has the blah 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 text. At the beginning of your end sub, put a coin counter on another target creature. Whenever a creature with a coin counter on it dies or is put into exile, return that card to the battlefield under your control. We built this deck and we've actually got to play against the deck we built. It ended up being pretty sweet. It's just, it's fairly powerful. It just, it comes out and the coin counters are constantly going down. So it's, if you're wiping the board, it's not really going to help much because all the stuff's just going to come back. You really have to get rid of Athreos, but he's indestructible, so he's tough to get rid of. Here's the, I think maybe one of the hidden annoying things is that both these abilities don't cost mana and every other god has an ability that costs mana and an ability that doesn't cost mana. This one just has two abilities that are just always going to happen. Yeah, uh, you really have to get rid of Athreos when you're dealing with this deck, but obviously it's hard to get rid That's of. It's not an easy task. You know, maybe every deck can do it once reliably, but past that, you have to draw the card, and it's, I don't know. It's tough. Yeah, and plus if they have it's fun though. I don't I don't mind losing to this. No, it's nothing crazy. It's not it's not unfun. It can be it can be annoying at times, which was the one point I think is lost. But let's see. speaking uh, of points lost, how about why does he have a two for art? Uh, because this art is awful. It's Igor so Igor draws square body. Look at the first art for this, and look at the second art, and just compare those two. It's not yeah, close. Also, the color palette is gray and brown. I'm not a huge fan. I don't like the square body thing. Uh, Igor also does get mad props for drawing Elishnorn. That card's amazing. Yeah. That art is stellar. It's so good. This, this art just happens to be completely miserably bad. Yep. Uh, knife for Coolness. Uh, Athros hasn't done anything new here either, I believe. No, nope, just the God of Passage. I think they wanted to buy, bring it back for the buy box because I think he was the most beloved one last time. And uh, he, he, there's relevance. He is the passage from the underworld to yeah, he definitely messed the up. mortal world. He definitely messed up somewhere. Everyone got out. Maybe he just fell asleep. Maybe that's the whole story. Athros is like, all right, guys, just give me like five minutes. I'll be fine. Yeah. I mean, his hound is here too, doing nothing. Yeah, his hound also not impacting anything. I mean, I'll look how many things escaped. Yeah. No escaping on my watch or my dog. We're going to go to sleep. No, it didn't work out too well. And uniqueness, coin counters. Come on. Name one other card that has coin counters on it. I don't even know if there is one. There might be. No. There's a lot of stupid counters. There anymore. are a lot of stupid counters. Uh, next, we have 131, Kroxa, Titan of Death's Hunger, right above Zada, Hedron Grinder, right below Alela, Alila, Alula, uh, Arfo Provocateur. What does Kroxa do? Kroxa is red black for a 6 6. Oh, Whoa! Whoa, that's so cheap. When it enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless it escaped. Well, that card's horrible. But there's so much more. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card. If they discard a land or don't discard a card at all, they lose three life. Red, red, black, black, escape, exile five other cards from your graveyard. It's actually good. only an undercosted 6-6. Six, six. You can't pay six for this. Yes. It's, yeah, it's always going to cheat mana. Yeah, don't put this in the command zone after it dies. Um, just put it in the graveyard. Start escaping, and then you never have to pay commander tax. Yeah, and if he starts attacking, oh yeah, it's one of your tax too. I didn't even mention that. Yeah, this he's is got Titan brutal, text. Brutal card advantage. This card is so good. They have Titan text, which is adorable because they're Titans. Super cool. Yeah, yeah. If it attacks, they also discard and same text. It's great. This card is really strong. This is one of the best commanders from the set. Yeah, I mean, there's not there's not much above six power. I think six was the high power for the set. Which yeah, is this gets you so much card advantage. I don't want a million nines and tens where you don't have to build around them at all and they're just amazing and they're the best thing ever and no one can ever beat them and if you cast a creature spell when you control this commander you win the game. <laughs> Is that any card ever? No, it's too lame. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's fair. Uh, he has a six for fun because nobody likes discarding. Nobody likes discarding. Nah, it's a little much on the discarding. It's like Nicol Bolas Ravager. It's just kind of annoying. Yeah, I've won. People hate discarding. I've learned that for sure. Um, Nine for art. He's got like a big hole in his stomach and he just eats everything. He's endless hunger. I think I read somewhere that he could eat a god if he wanted to. I think it's like, hey, he's going to eat everybody on earth and then he's going to go upstairs. <laughs> eat. He does eat stuff to extinction. Yeah. And he can he can like, if you target a god with eat to extinction, it goes away. Yeah. So presumably he could eat a god. He can eat whatever he wants. Good for him. <laughs> he got trapped by Clothless and then he broke out with his buddy Uro. And that's all we know. Yeah, they... Maybe if we go back, we'll hear about that. They were holding hands and they skipped out of the underworld together. <laughs> Those, Cru the, crushing everything because they're giants. Athreos is asleep and his hound is also asleep. Uh, what about uniqueness? Does this care commander? That's good. It just doesn't have commander attacks. That's the that's where the uniqueness comes from. Yeah. Ooh, what's next? We have 
Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, 127. Right above Mystics of the Is Magnus and right below God Eternal Kefnet. One green blue for a 6-6 six, six Elder Giant. Whoa! 6-6 six, <laughs> six for three. <laughs> Whenever it enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless it escaped. Oh. Whenever a hero enters the battlefield or attacked, you gain three life and draw a card, and then you may put a land from your hand onto the battlefield. Green, green, blue, blue. Exile five other cards to escape it. Okay, it's great again. This card's amazing. It's going to give you a million card advantages. It's going to draw you a bunch of cards. Grow Spiral every turn. Oh, baby. Yep, he, can, he gets it when he attacks. He gets it when he enters. It's awesome. The main difference between green and blue and red and black is you're going to be able to bounce this stupid thing so many times in response to the escape trigger. Mm -hmm. Crystal yeah. sharding and dead eye navigatoring and whatever else. Yeah, you can do that a lot. Uh, it's, it's on the same power level, though. You're, you're not making everybody discard. You're instead... Giving yourself card advantage by drawing. It's actually, yeah, I think it's actually worse than what Croak's trigger is. Yeah, that might be true. Uh, I'd rather have the discard. They're both very good, though. They're really good. Uh, eight for fun because you're not really impeding your opponent's fun. You're just yeah. kind of you're advancing your own board state while not stopping them from playing magic at all. Yeah, this lets you play all the magic. You're ramping times a million. The only thing I don't like about the thing that made me not like this art as much is the, his mouth. His, his mouth on Arena when you play him, he like he goes. Ooh. Hello. I don't. It looks weird, and I don't like it. Doesn't it start raining too? I don't know. It's off. It's very off-putting. Well, that thanks a lot, Earl. You just lost some points for your arena programming. No, it's, he's just as cool as Croxa. They're both escaping, uh, doing things, frolicking away, frolicking away as homosexual couple. I don't think that's canon. Uh, you know what head canon is? Because it's head canon. Okay, it's head canon. We're shipping Uro and Croxa. That's a uh, Crookso. <laughs> Croakso. Moving on. Pelucranos, <laughs> Unchained. He's back, baby. 109, and he's above Ludovic, and he's below Phoenix, and he is a 2 green black zero, 0 enters the battlefield with 6 plus 1 plus 1 counters. He's playing 1, he's playing green, he's playing black, and he's fighting target creature. And then, if he dies, uh, like he did before, like a little baby to Elspeth, he's going to pay 4 green black and exile 6 cards, and he's escaping, and he's coming back with. Oh my god, his powers have doubled <laughs> since the last time you met him. He's now a 12-12. Yeah, but uh, I know what that BZ didn't say is if damage would be dealt to this man, you prevent that damage and remove that many counters instead. That includes lifelink and death touch, so neither of those apply when he's fighting. Yes, so he, yeah, he can't be death touched to death. This card's great. It's just efficient. It's plus one, plus one counters. The art is, the art is so good. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, you, you Holy see crap. He's, he's growing two, two new heads in the places of his old one where it was They're, cut uh, off. Yeah. He's that. I just thought they were new. I forgot that Elspeth like chopped off a couple of heads. Yeah, Elspeth chopped off those heads to kill him and That's then amazing. he grew them back. Yeah, he grew them back and presumably when he comes back to escape, there's six new heads that I can easily picture. It's like sunset on the underworld and he's just ravaging some landscape. Yeah. Ugh. Get wrecked by Pelokonos. Yeah, uh, the power is kind of low. I mean, it's just, he's big, but he's a lot of mana to fight a creature. Yeah, you can just, you can just pick off a lot of smaller creatures. He comes back huge. He has a potential one shot, but he doesn't have any evasion. Yeah, he's got no evasion, and the escape cost is a little pricey. Six mana and six cards. Whew. Yeah, six cards is a lot. I mean, five is a lot for the other two, but they're also come down. But, yeah, but they're only four to escape, which is way different. Yeah, uh, fun. He's fun. He comes up. He just starts fighting. He's big. He's a big fat fatty. You can't be mad at a big fat fatty, can you? Uh, I'm so mad at a big fat fatty. Oh, okay. Uh, you can also, if you want to be really cute and you want to play a really Timmy deck, you can put, what is it, Hydra's Growth in here, double his counters every turn. Someone somewhere has lost to that and limited, and I am very sorry. It was me. You lost to that? Yes, I oh, did. Oh, yeah. I had it escaped, and then two Hydra's Growth thrown on two turns in a row. I'm like, woo! Wait, he played Hydra's Growth and then played a second Hydra's Growth? So it was 24, and then... I don't know what it was. What, like 128? I died. Holy crap, I just escaped. Wait, he just died of the 12 12. Like, okay, you escaped Lucre, and I was like, lose. <laughs> yeah, I know. Not in Commander, though. Way worse. Uh, time for coolness because Polokonos is so cool. Oh, yeah. Polokonos is great. We talked about that. We yeah. talked about it a little bit. Yeah, we did. Uh, the Annex, the Hardened into the Forge, is next, and he is one red red for a star three equal to your devotion. You know how that works. I thought we talked about all these, but we didn't. He, whenever. A creature you control dies, you make a 1-1 one, one satyr that can't block. But if the creature that died had four power, you make two of those satyrs instead. He is above Urza, Lord High Artificer. We talked about this. <laughs> and he's below Kumena, Tyrant of Aruska, who originally had the position of, wow, this is above Urza, Lord High Artificer. 
So he comes in at 87. His power is – it's not too bad because if you can get some sack outlets on the board, start throwing stuff away, you can just cash in, get more satyrs, get more stuff to sack. Easily the biggest surprise of rankings, this one. Oh, yeah, because there's just we – we'll just keep – we'll go over everything here because we're in the top 100 for these guys. So let's just talk about what they actually do. Yeah. Uh, a for fun. I mean, he's just – it's going to be some sort of mono red aristocrat type. He thing. lets you do a lot of stuff. It's you can, interesting. You can augment his power if you want to go for devotion. You're you're not immune to boar but you're super resilient against them. You just get one ones to replace all your dudes. This is the best skull clamp deck that red, mono reds ever hoped for. Oh my god, it's so good with skull clamp. Play a, if you play a three one and you equip skull clamp to it, you'll get two satyrs. You get two satyrs. His power is a four zero when it dies. Uh, his art is really good. He's so mad. He is peeved. He's trying to. He can only think about victory. Perforos, I think, as far as I know, plucked him out of the throne and was just like, "All right, you work for me now. You only think about victory." But what's What's so sad about it? He oh, he still repeats one word, Siamese. That's his wife. That's his wife, Siamese. He st- can't even think about her, but he keeps saying it. Oh, it's creepy. Gods are the horrible people. Yeah. Horrible, horrible. Such a jerk to take him away from his wife and make him only think about victory. Yeah, this the Theros is a little bittersweet because Erebos is like a big giant jerk. And he gets exactly what he wants. He gets Heliod, you know, off power. Heliod's a big jerk because he's paranoid and he's killing people and he's erasing the other gods. And, like, they're all just bad. They're all they're just not the good guys, which is cool. I mean, the gods are, yeah. Like, and, Theros is not a good place to live. Yeah. I don't I don't know that I would want to live there. But everywhere else is like, I could see living there, you know. You got to deal with some, you know, maybe big, ferocious creatures every now and again. But it's like, you could live on Ixalan. Can't live on Theros. I don't, I don't know if I want to live on Ixalan. Yeah, then again, guaranteed afterlife is tough to beat. Have you met the gods? They could probably just erase you from existence. Well, actually, did you know that in once you're in the underworld, this is totally applicable for the lore of the set? That's what Final Death is. It's Super Death from Coco. If you stay in the underworld long enough, you harden into like stone and all your memories and self is erased. Like you're basically just super dead. Oh. And then you turn into a statue. That's what Final Death is. Oh, well, that's there's, sad. There's a lot of those pil- like statues of just dead like people crumbling. Well, that's sad. Yeah. Super Not based on memory, though, like Coco. Yeah. Super Death is, I don't know. Super Death is the most annoying thing ever. Uh, nine for uniqueness because he's mono red aristocrats. What is what is that? What's that's super weird? You're telling me mono red aristocrats, or you can just be beat down and take the satyrs as gravy. Awesome. Right. So what's so next here at number sixty two we have Perforos bronze blooded right above Shroom the hedge mage or hedge hegemon Digimon. Uh, Shroom the hegemon uh, and right below Wart the raid mother four and a red for a legendary enchantment god. He's indestructible. He's a seven six. Devotion text, other creatures you control have haste. Two in a red, and you may put a red creature or an artifact creature card from your hand onto the battlefield, sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. Because it has haste, you can then smash somebody with it. Yep, so this is the sneak attack commander. Yeah, he's two in a red sneak attack. That's not bad if you can find a way to get them into your hand. Red is okay at tutoring artifacts, kind of. You have gamble. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> not the best, actually. Uh, this this power is low, but everything else is high. So let's talk about everything else. Yeah, uh, but he's not very powerful because there's not one. There's not that much to really even put down. There's nothing that's gonna win you the game on the spot. So and since one is paying eight mana for a creature, really cheating anything, <laughs> and then it just dies. So you really gotta take advantage of it. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, nine for fun because you just get to throw fatties down and crush. Uh, the the one last point is if you you can gimp somebody with some annoying stuff like Bloid Steel Colossus or maybe even just. Uh, some colorless creature that has an annoying attack trigger. I mean, you can, like, you could paint her servant and put Eldrazi out. You could paint her servant and put Eldrazi out. Ugh, that that's would, no fun. That's no fun at all. That would be something like a lost point. Uh, his art is <laughs> super good. He's, like, exploding volcanoes. He's, like, he, the vol- the wall, like, I think it's just kind of like the lava's coming up because he's, he's, he's defecting it. I don't know. It's really cool. He's doing He's, like, <laughs> I don't know. Either way, it's sweet. He looks pissed. I don't know what at. Maybe that Cyan Mead's, like, hey, where's my husband? <laughs> It's like, don't worry about it. It's just going to smash. If you smash Sammy with a hammer, it's like, jeez. You did. Oh, no. <laughs> Crushed her. He's got a squeaky gavel. That's what his hammer is. And it still kills her because it's so big. <laughs> That's <laughs> me. Sammy. That's why NX is so mad. Uh, he got a 10 for coolness. He's the god of the perforos. You know, he had a he had a crush on Nylia, but it didn't work out. He makes, it never does. He makes weapons and stuff. Have we ever had a relationship work out? 
I Kenny Osentero was the only one, I think. Yeah, they're dead now, so they definitely worked out. They, they worked out, right? Until death. But Annex and Siamese didn't work out anymore. Uh, Pia and Kieran, no. What? Kieran's dead. Yeah, Kieran's just dead. They can't work out. I'm, I just can't think of one. Uh, there's not many relationships working out in Magic the Gathering. No, definitely not. Uh, you know what is working out? There's only two more commanders. They're both the bleak card of that 57, right above Perfor Host God of the Forge, and right below Timna the Weaver. Three in the back for a legendary enchantment creature god. Five, six, indestructible, devotion tax. Whenever another creature you control dies, you may pay two life. If you do, draw a card. One of the black, sacrifice another creature. Terry creature gets minus two, minus one until end of turn. So he turns on his own ability. So, yeah, he turns on his own ability. He can sacrifice. I mean, on a, on a unreal, like, on a note that doesn't actually affect this card's ranking, I'm kind of disappointed that it's super similar to one in a black pay two life draw card. I mean, I don't like that both Erevoses do that. But then again, you know, it's consistency, consistency among character that didn't really change from then to now. I'm not really. What do gods do? They draw cards. Apparently, this one just draws cards. This one just wants to draw cards and make you lose two life. It's fairly powerful. Whenever you just have a sack all let out, you can just give it all your chaff, pay two the, life. Yeah, the fact card. that it's free, a free uh, card draw when your creatures die is great. Yeah, if someone has a board wipe, I mean, you could just go. You ahead. just recover from it. <laughs> you get to kill random X1 utilities. Like, oh, you want to kill that Matador? You just do it. Yeah, you can definitely do that. I mean, it only costs two mana. It's not this huge investment. Uh, a for fun. He's not really hurting too much fun. He cost, he cost a lot of life, so you really got to make sure there's a lot of life gain in the deck like this. Cause get your Sangromancers out of the out of the trade binder. Yeah, Sangromancer works really well in this deck because you can sacrifice your creature, kill that mana dork, and gain three life. And, and then just drop you net one life. So gain one life draw card? I do that every time. I'm in. Uh, ten for our Oh team. my god. Whew, it's so good. The whip in the sky. The, the whip. spiral whip. The Just the whole scenery of it. I This art, I didn't even like it at first because I didn't really look at it. But as soon as I looked at it, I'm like... Ooh, it looks really good. Have you seen how much purple is in it? Because there's a lot of purple. There's a lot of purple, but no purple lightning. The only cards of purple lightning in this art and this set was Khalifi. Thrix, and Khalifi has a tiny, tiny purple lightning in the back. Thrix has like all blue. I don't know. I thought it was purple. I think it's all Maybe blue. it's blue and purple, whatever. Well, no, blue is half of purple. Uh, sure. Uh, <laughs> Ten for. Uh, coolness because this is Erebos. Erebos is super cool. He didn't get much more lore. He's one of the three main characters we're talking about. He did put he did put uh, the giant boulder on Helia. He's like, ha, take that, you idiot. And nobody mentioned um, they kind of uh, what is that card? Bearer of the Heavens. I thought that would be something. That's it. I don't like the fact that that card exists. It's like ten mana for a ten ten or whatever. But when it dies, you destroy all permanents. So it's implied that this guy's holding up like the whole universe. He's got the world on his shoulders, and if he were to die, everything explodes. But it also says in the flavor text uh, that carrying the world is a titanic responsibility, implying, was he a titan? What? Maybe. What a weird... Who, why do you care about that? Why, why, why is... There's just like a nuclear bomb that is like somebody... This guy trips on a boulder. The whole place goes down. Oh, it's just a reference uh, to Atlas. Yeah, it's Atlas, but... Seem like it would come up in the lore. It doesn't need to. He just oh, Atlas is always holding the world. It's just it's just applied. It's just there. <laughs> He's just doing it. And a five for uniqueness. This is aristocrat in black, and it's a uh, life draw card sacrifice wow. creature. You don't see that much. The god part is where he gets most of his uniqueness. But we can move on to the best guy in all of the set. And it's ironic because this is probably his last appearance on the uh, the old ranking list. Heliod Sun Crown coming in at forty one. Right above Ocon, I have cast. I know what you're thinking. You guys said that last video. Because he's right below Tulane, Teller of Tales. Not quite enough to dethrone the throne highest throne commander. Throne, throne, throne. throne. I can't word today. That's why I'm not reading half these now. Two and away for a legendary enchantment creature, God, indestructible, devotion text. He's a 5-5. Five, five. Uh, whenever you gain life, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature or enchantment you control. Pay one of the white, another target creature gains lifelink until end of turn. The enchantment thing is only really relevant to him so that when he becomes a creature, he's suited up. No, it's also relevant if you want to put it on something stupid just to be silly. Yeah, you could put it on your Gauntlets of Light on your Daxos and go, look out, baby. <laughs> Watch out, baby. Kia. <laughs> Kia. <laughs> this card's pretty good. I, I don't know. It's not that great. It's life gain commander, but... It gives you the ability to fuel itself if you really... It can just be a mid-range, random mid-range commander. Yeah. He also has... He does have... Oh, wait. He has a two-card infinite combo. 
He does have a two-card infinite combo. Oh my god, we oh, walking ballista on this guy goes infinite too. Apparently, there's two commanders in the set with two card infinite combos. Walking mm -hmm. ballista, Halyai can go infinite. Yeah, white has white has actually a lot of ways to drop walking ballista. I'm thinking about it. Yes. You got uh Ranger Vios, uh Recruiter of the Guard, Enlightened Tutor, at least off the top of my head. I mean, there's a there's a bunch of artifact tutors and mm -hmm. artifact enchantment tutors. I mean, there's I don't feel like thinking of them. I'm done with this. We're on to the next thing. A nine for fun, because I mean he's a life gain commander. You can Make a bunch of dudes, put a bunch of counters on them, attack. You can even play the crappy Gideon's guy who is, gets two counters in a game life. <laughs> is, is the one point because you have to watch out a little bit for that Ballista? You do always have to watch out for Ballista if he's out because if they have – Lame. What, you need to have six mana. If you're putting on a test with six mana and Haliad and they have Ballista, they can just go infinite. Yeah, but there is an upside. They only have one Ballista. So once you get rid of it, you don't really have to worry about it. There's nothing that – I guess Triskelion, right? I guess Triskelion – just got into it's it. also something else to worry about, and it gets found by all the same cards we just mentioned. Yeah. So maybe you really just got to watch this guy. You got to just keep an eye on. Or just, uh, you know, ask him before, like, hey, you like Triangle Infinite, or are we just playing like Life Game? Do we got to gotta watch, do we gotta watch your stupid face, or do we got to watch your stupid face? Yeah, do we got to beat your stupid face, or got to watch your stupid face? Uh, Heliad's super cool, and his art is super good. He's the epitome of, like, he's so, he's the most Zeus-like. He's super paranoid. He doesn't like any of the other gods. He doesn't want anybody else to you know, stepping on his turf. He brings Daxos back, and then that's what makes everyone else bring their demigods because they think it's like a, a fight or a war or something. Yeah, he's a big jerk. Daxos doesn't even... Daxos can do nothing but listen to him. He doesn't even want to. I think, yeah, he's just stuck. He's stuck doing whatever he tell, tells him to do. Well, it's probably like, do what I say or I'll kill you. No, he's, he just doesn't have a choice. Like, not not like... He doesn't have a choice, Phys like uh, mentally. He doesn't, doesn't physically doesn't have a choice because Heliod's controlling. Gee, you know, I wonder what happened after Heliod got, you know, crushed under a boulder with Daxos. They just didn't say. Yeah. Like, oh, did Daxos and Elspeth, you know, meet up again and like get to at least have some closure? No, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Certainly would have been an interesting plot point to find out. Well, uh, I don't think they do because it does say that Elspeth planes walks away. After she beats Heliod, and then that's what makes Calix just go like, guess I'm a planeswalker now, and follow her. Guess. And I don't know. Well, that would have, okay, even that part of the story would have been super cool. Because, like, he's so, like, his purpose is just to follow Elspeth. And he's, like, so focused. He's like, man, I got to follow her. Like, what, what am I supposed to do? I'll just go after her. <laughs> uh, and the six uniqueness, because this is mono white life gain. As you know, that's not that unique. No, that's then that that does it. We have now ranked every single commander ever except two. Do you know who they are? Can you tell us in the comments below who we forgot and who will be getting their own video probably this weekend? No, probably just next week. It'll probably be one of the five videos we do. If we if we do five videos next week, definitely it'll be a bonus video. Yeah, we'll we'll see. Uh you somebody find them. What commanders did we not put on the list? There's we forgot We forgot two. Yeah, we messed up a little bit. That's okay. They're not that crazy anyway. It's not like they're that crazy good. Yeah. Uh, special shout outs to our 44 patrons. We love you guys all as much as we can without making you uncomfortable. And special shout outs to our mothers, Tammy and Michelle. You two are also awesome. You guys rock. What's... I'm going to list one way to support us that's not Patreon. And then you can do another one. Okay. Uh, the, the first one I can think of off the top of my head is to go to buymeacoffee.com and donate. Basically, just tip us three dollars that'd be great that just helps us out it's just another way you can support it doesn't have to be monthly just like like patreon does uh you can also go to tcgplayer.com click on the link in the description below it'll take you straight there and you'll be like wow i want to buy something cool buy anything you want through that link <laughs> you'll be like wow i want to buy something cool <laughs> buy something buy anything through that link we get kickback help support the channel and we always appreciate that um Thanks, everybody. This is the series is actually done besides two commanders. Yeah, assuming we did everything right, <laughs> the series is done. We just have to do catch up every time a new set comes out, which is a great feeling, honestly, to have it all behind us. This is so much work and it's it's paying off. And I was super happy that we just did five videos this week. Boom. One, 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 one. We just cranked it out and it makes me optimistic for when in the future the channel gets bigger, we can just keep doing this. Yeah, this has been fun. So uh, if you want to keep seeing five videos a week and not three videos a week, Show us, you know, support the channel, like, subscribe, whatever. Any, tell a friend. Tell a friend. Any form of support we can get. We just need to get more support. We need to make this so we can focus on this full time. Yeah, clearly we're capable of it physically. So now we just need to see like, hey, can we, if it's worth it for us to do it. Okay. Yep. Uh, we're leaving. Bye. Peace out, tribes. <laughs> Bye.